on another trip. I was home for one night after six consecutive nights out in the woods and I booked a trip and now I'm out again. This is gonna be a high speed, low drag, like really, really, really test your grit type uh, a trip. I'm gonna do high mileage and not stop. I'm gonna try to do something that is normally done in six days. I'm gonna try to do it in three. some renovations here where I'm starting out at. It's 11 o'clock on Thursday. 11 o'clock a.m. on Thursday, not p.m. I'm gonna do the Northwest Loop. Kevin Callan, in ha it has in his Killarney book, in the book it says it takes six to eight days to complete the loop. I've booked three nights. We're gonna see how fast I can do it. It's like 24 to 60, 80, it's like 92-ish kilometers of travel, mm, roughly 10,000 meters of portage. Most of that portage is being being tomorrow. So uh, I don't know, I got, I'm really packed really light. I'll show you my gear later on. I got some different gear that I don't ever bring canoeing. And uh, we'll see just, this is, you know, see what you're made of type stuff, Joe. I'm in a good place in a good place you know all right i'm gonna keep you updated along the way i'm gonna show you the map and my progress and just what's going on and uh already this boat feels way different than the prospector <laughs> not five minutes into my paddle i spy two loons coasting for fish cabins dot the one side of the shore and I can start to see the quartzite hills and the mountains. I'm not quite in the park yet, and I'm looking for an unofficial portage up and out of this lake so I don't have to paddle upstream for half my day. There is a headwind, but it's not bad. And I'm feeling 65%. After a little difficulty finding it, we located the uh, unofficial portage trail. Here we go. Oh, it's feeling much heavier than at home. Whew. Uphill both ways, six feet of snow. Uh -huh. That was a real treat. I packed super light so that I can single carry everything and make good distance and time. And all that fun stuff and I put my map this is my Killarney map Jeff's map from Killarney I put it in my pocket at the beginning of the portage thinking ah it's in my pocket far enough it was fine get to the end of the portage thankfully I looked for my map could not find it it was like three quarters of the way back at the start of the portage so moral of the story put your map away I'm ready for my next portage and uh, look at this the water is super high. These trees are straight up in the water now. I've been here before and I was actually able to paddle in there and fish in there. There's rapids or a waterfall thing there. There's no way you can even paddle in there right now. On the port again. Ding, 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 ding. What in the heck? We're on the upside of this waterfall. There's a freaking line across the lake, up across the river. The tree must have fallen on it. Brought it down. That's weird. It's a pretty strong current. I'm going upstream right now. See what I mean? This cord, this, this cable, this tree must have fallen or got swept down and taken it out. But... And there's, it goes all the way over there. The flag on it? No, grass on it. So weird. It's going around a dam. That is some heavy water, man. Gonna run it. No trespassing except for portagers. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool sign. Thank you. 
I was just going to put in right here, though. I don't even need to trespass. Trespassers will. Short for, short for trespassers, William. Trespassers will. Something I do every day. So I'm on a long stretch, this Lang Lake it's called, and I'm heading east. And for the while, for the longest while this morning, I had a headwind, and now since I turned a corner back there, I have a tailwind, and I will take it. I'm very warm and uh, the breeze is nice and not fighting the wind is very nice as well. So I, I'm on here for a few hours before I even come to my first little portage now. I had a, I had a, the second portage I did there was not even on the map, it was just for, because of the high water. Oh, I stirred up all the bugs. Oh my goodness, let's not do that again. Away from the shore, away from the shore. <laughs> go! Some bugs in here, boy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I learned to keep my oh, splash back, splash back. Keep my mouth closed, eh? I'm portaging up around this at a cabin, so that's what we're doing. None of this is on my map. Try not to go on their stuff too much. This looks good. Thank you people, thank you, thank you. I'm sure I'm not the first. Crossing into this lake, this is Plunge Lake. Crossing into this lake puts me into the par park proper for the first time, and it's been four hours and 10 minutes. Well, you sure can't tell we're flooded here. Portage, portage sign is on a tree in the water. So now we're paddling through the forest. Not a first, not a first. Lots of stuff falling lately. I'm kind of surprised that it's not cleaned up as it is the park, but I am on a northwest route that really doesn't get seen by much traffic, so maybe it's not all that surprising. Certainly not complaining. It's nothing. Uh, even it's not even an issue. I've got a backpacking style backpack on this trip. This is. Do you guys remember Go Light? The brand Go Light. This is what they turned into my trail. I don't even know if they're anything anymore, but this is a 50 liter uh, go light, basically that guy. Check this out, I uh, saw something funny here. So look, there's boats, stash and canoes and everything at this portage. It's not, not out of the ordinary, but look at, here you can see Warner, upside down Warner. They painted it on. <laughs> Somebody messed up. The oh, heart goes there, bud. <laughs> Little leopard frog. Man, I've got such a good tailwind here. I'm making really good, really good time. I must be going like, I don't know, at least 10 kilometers an hour, at the very least. That's 
where I came from and I'm sure glad I'm not going that way because I might be posted up for the day if that was the case. All right, on to the biggest portage yet, 650 meters. Oh my God. Man, it's nice to be in the hardwoods again after those past couple trips. Uh, yeah, this is all hardwoods. With a crunch on the ground as I walk. Smells of leaf decay, which is very, very nice. And it's a super cool change of pace from what I've been seeing. I usually do, listen, like not every trip is like this, right? Like different trips are different things. Uh, I kind of get flack sometimes when I do this high speed, low drag stuff. Oh, don't you, why don't you take your time and enjoy it? Well, I do that too, right? That was the trip previous. This is specifically for this purpose. I usually do this like uh, the gut check type, high speed, low drag, see what I can do, canoe trip once a year. I've been doing it for like the past three or four years. I think this is the fourth year. And normally I do it at the end of the year when I'm feeling, I got my canoe legs under me, you know what I mean? I'm feeling strong and whatnot, but um, I've been feeling pretty good after not feeling great for the winter and I just want to keep it going. I don't even really want to go home. I mean, I go home, I sit there, I eat junk food and whatever. When I'm out here, I only have what I have. I don't bring any junk and I'm busting my butt every day, which is good for me. So we're gonna try and keep this up throughout the summer. Pop back in at home every once in a while, you know? See how things are going, but for the most part, and don't get me wrong, I got some stuff planned in the summer with the family too. But for the most part, Joe's time to shine. I didn't take the portage as far as I needed to. Now I'm stuck doing this. I'm almost out of it. It would have been easier and quicker just to finish the portage. That's why the portage is there. All right, Joe. Oh. It's too deep to walk. Oh, the end is in sight. The end is in sight. Go, go, go. Oh, 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 that was so silly. I do silly things. I do silly things. You think after a canoe trip or two and almost 40 years under my belt that I would make smarter decisions. You'd think that, but you'd be wrong. Six hours and I still got plenty of gas in the tank we're gonna see I'll probably go till dark to be honest with you man check this out it's so awesome to see the stuff growing little fiddleheads uh, maybe a trillium I'm not really sure may mayflower whatever that might be but man spring is sprung and I'm happy about it I just stopped at this beaver dam it's pretty hefty I gotta carry it down but look at the size of this clam shell I don't know if I've ever seen a freaking clamshell that big in Ontario. That is massive. Next to my little hand for comparison. Even this one's big and it's way bigger than this one. Old faithful, you know.
I'm headed out that away. Pretty cool topography, a lot of open rock, a lot of aspen. Their bugs are coming out whenever I'm near the land here. Ooh, young elm. Young elm shoots. Maybe not. Yeah, it is. All these are. Unless they're alders. Elmer Alder, one of the two. There's some pretty, some pretty wicked sun rays coming down behind me. <clears throat> I think you can see them. I think I can see it in the, in the screen there. So um, we're crushing it. I, I just passed the site that I actually booked for the for tonight. There's nobody in this park. I'm gonna be honest. I'm just gonna go. I'm just going, and I'm sure I'll be able to find a campsite and uh, not have too much concern. Uh, it's just what it is. It's how I do it. Uh, when I'm by myself and when I feel like it's appropriate to do so, and I do. I haven't seen a single soul canoeing. The only people I've saw were people at their cottages getting it ready for the season. That was like hours ago. I haven't, I'm, I'm in the park proper. There's no cottages now where I am. And uh, I'm just gonna squirm my way through this little narrows into the next lake and keep on trucking, man. Freaking cruising, feeling good. And uh, I might even be able to do this trip in two nights, who knows? That'd be crazy. Check this bad boy out. Wow, it's like a duplex. Duplex in there. We got a rock in there, trees. <laughs> I just saw some deer or moose fur in there too. Nice. This is a gorgeous spot. Gorgeous time of day. Gorgeous time of year. Gorgeous. Oh, well, this is cool. It said on my map that if the water levels were very high, I might be able to skip my portage or some of it. And I did, I did some of it, and now I'm running through this little tiny maze of maybe like a foot of water. I don't know if it's any better. But it doesn't seem like it right now. Not going too bad, I guess. I'm not even paddling, I'm just pushing off the sides. Yep. Oh boy. Yep. Starting to get hungry for supper. I might have a snack here before too long. Okay, this is silly. Okay, looks like it widens out here. Might put it in, try again. Whew. I gotta stop and have supper. Okay, so with me, picked up a lot of bugs there. Picked up a lot of bugs. It's now seven, seven o'clock, which means I got my paddle stuck, which means I've been going for eight hours. Probably time to 
maybe start thinking about looking for a camp, but probably got two hours left of light. I do need to eat if I'm gonna keep going. Whew, buggy. Okay, decisions, decisions. Well, I came to this really nice campsite, super big and open and on a point. Uh, I'm gonna have supper here and then decide what to do. I feel sluggish afterwards, maybe I'll just stay here, but I assume I'll continue on for another hour or so. I'm gonna do spaghetti. I already was thinking about it. Oh, spaghetti. And I got the uh, Parmigiano to go with it. This is the spaghetti. Can't wait to have that. It's super good. Got my water on the bush, buddy. I gotta add more wood. Not that it's a big deal, it's just how you have to do it. Oops. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Lots of hair stuff lately. So just let that go for a minute and it'll be fine. Mmm, tasty. This is a really nice site. If I didn't have such like a gung-ho, move, move, move type feel right now, I'd probably stay here. It's 7.30. 7.30. I'm sure I can make it to the next lake where there's a, a site by nine. Minimal, minimal gear, no chair style, but Parmesan cheese by the boatload. Cheese that spaghetti right up. Well, that's hot. Splashed on my hand. Okay, it's good texture now. A little watery, but nothing I can't handle. Woo! She's hot. All right, much needed. 7.52. It's gonna cut it close, but that's me, you know? Close cutting Joe. Sun is getting low in the sky. Looking for my very last portage of the day. And it's uh, not that easy to find. I did not expect this. I had no idea this was here. Wow, the door's been ripped off of it. Look at that. Huh. Okay, wow. That's trashed. Oh, it stinks. All right. Little trapper's cabin. Old school Coleman uh, stove. Old school Coleman stove. Just the guts of it. <laughs> Firewood like crazy under there. Good old pan. Old wood stove. wood. So very much wood. Coal oil. Ah, it's a shame it's wrecked. It's tiny. Probably been here forever. All right, we're losing light. It's like a 500 meter portage, roughly. And then I got a little bit of a paddle. And then hopefully nobody's there. And if nobody's there, it's fair game because nobody's certainly coming after me tonight because it's going to be dark. Peep! Peep! All right, who made 
made a good time on that poor dodge. Now we're just got to paddle up to a campsite now. All right, there she is. Home, 8.47, going for nine hours, 47 minutes. Not too shabby. I'm gonna tuck in over here, think, away from the wind. Pretty nice sight. Doesn't look, uh, doesn't look used all that much. Doesn't look used recently, at least. Yeah, this is a nice flat spot. Ish. Yeah, I got a spot here next to this downed tree. Looks like a woodpecker's going to town at it. Oh, I'm gonna dump my backpack out in true Joe fashion. Do a little gear explosion. This is the X Mid One, and I can't, by Durston. By Durston, they sent me this to try it out. Thanks, guys. Apparently, there's a few different variations. This is the economical one. A little bit heavier. Oh man, I might have to move it over too close to this log. Got two poles with two pole spots. Mm -hmm. I like these one-headed zips everywhere. Oh. Oh. Yes, laying down, oh boy. Anyways, brand new tent. I like it so far. We'll see how she goes, but light enough and easy enough to set up. Well, I'm all squared away in here now. <laughs> it's roomier than my big Agnes. I can sit up on both ends. It's asymmetrical. It's weird. I mean, I don't know what the word is. It's a ge geometric wonder. <laughs> Um, anyways, lots of, uh, lots of screen, oh, there's a critter out there, Psst. got my food right there, oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna add all this up, I'll get back to you. Well, not as much as I as much as I thought. I did twenty about twenty eight kilometers today, in uh, ten hours or so, with like maybe three kilometers of portage or something like that. I am going to be able to do this trip in two nights. I just mapped it out, and for sure I'll be able to do it in two nights. Uh, there's a chance I might even be able to do it finish tomorrow night, but we'll see. Uh, it's Mother's Day Sunday. I will be home before then, regardless. But if I can get home, anyways. Regardless, I wanted to see how fast I could do it the whole time, and uh, I'm, I'm freaking crushing it. I'm extremely happy about my time and my pace and my energy level and my, and my overall everything. So, I will, uh, I'm going to bed, I'm crashing hard, and I'm going to get up early, eat breakfast, and head out again. Good night. Good morning, it's almost six. I slept real well. This tent is nice. The first night in the tent, in a new tent, is always something. Anyway, I want to get up and uh, eat breakfast and go. Another full day. I'm going to try and be on the water by 6.30. No condensation at all in here because I had both vestibules completely open. Lots of airflow. Pretty slick setup.
Got a good fire on the bush, buddy, here. I got some awesome oatmeal to eat. Made up at home. Wait till you see this. <clears throat> Wait till you see it. I say Geneva, you hear Helsinki? Anyone? What's that from? Hoggedy. This right here is exactly what I think of when I think of Killarney. This type of rock at a campsite. Windswept pines. Nice big clear lake. We're on Great Mountain Lake, and there is no fishing allowed here. It's a fish sanctuary. I'm all packed up, ready to go. Just wanted to show you what I have. With the exception of what's on my person, like this puffy, some toilet paper in my pocket, that's about it. This is all the gear I have. Tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, clothes. So there, oh, it's a hole. Socks, underwear, long johns, long sleeve shirt, undershirt. Possible pouch with everything in the kitchen sink in there. Uh, everything you can imagine pills, charging stuff, um, uh, in reach, everything. Food cooking pot with my bush buddy cook, uh, stove in it and a saw which I've not used so one two three four five six seven eight things then I have a map my my trail backpack the super lightweight um, life jacket and because it's not a waterproof bag I have a um, dry bag that goes inside it and then all that goes inside the dry bag and my water filter can't forget the be free water filter the all important all right i'm ready to go seagulls out there chirping me joe he said he'd be gone by seven. Oh, what did i say 6 30 it's 6 49 regardless 6 49 i am feeling Feeling alert and chipper and ready to go. My hands are a little blistery, a little blistery from yesterday. I crack my neck about 10 times a day at least. Is that good? I'm tainted. The big exposed quartzite hills here. Sure, it's why it gets its name of Great Mountain Lake. I never knew these were here, and there's a campsite right there. Look at that view right there across. The sun's gonna come up above. It's pretty cool, man. Those are slick, almost pure white. Coming up to my first portage of the day. I believe it's a 900 back to back with another 900. I'll have to look at the map, but I'm sure that's what it is because I looked at it plenty. <laughs> that's a pretty decent little campsite too, actually across. It'd be nice to bring Will here to see this. I'd have to find a different way in, I think, or, or take longer to get in. That was a... Uh, a slog. I wouldn't expect anybody to do that yesterday. Okay, I was wrong. This isn't the 900. Just a little carryover, but oh my god, look at this. Do you see the bugs in the water? Do you see the amount of bugs? <clears throat> okay. Let me get out of here. Bugs.
I got bugs. I got bugs in my beard. Who's heard that uh, Pearl Jam song? It's on the old album Vitalogy. Bugs. I think it's called, uh, I think it's called Bugs. Old oh, man all over the water. Seeing the contour of that hill there makes me know that I've been here before. I did a trip with Kyle, Ken, and Doug here, a five day trip, like back early, 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 early on. And I almost got hypothermic, or I did. It was raining, it was like early May or something. I'm talking like, fuck, it's so long ago. Um, anyways, I remember I have a picture of that slopey hill there. It jogged it in my memory. I can never remember those old trips because I was never the one to plan it. And I never really kept track of where we were or where we were going. I was just along for the ride because I didn't know anything. Now that I plan my own trips and keep my own track of stuff, I remember it way better. But even if you are just with people, you should know the road and stuff. It's You have to know where you're going and <clears throat> be in control of yourself, not to rely on anyone out here. It's nice to have people you know you can rely on, but you have to make sure that you're good alone. It was something I never even used to take into consideration. Well, off we go. 900. Which way? I'm portaging through a real pretty uplands uh, hemlock forest high up here. Very sparse, as you can see. It's gorgeous in here. How many times are we going to say that this trip? It's gorgeous. It's funny, I came down about five feet in elevation and now it's all maple. No sign of water. Not a lake in sight. Well, that's unfortunate. Somebody forgot their fishing pole here. Wonder how long that's been sitting there for. Oh. By the looks of the line, quite a while. <laughs> well, we'll leave it there. There are some relative uh, fresh tracks, people tracks, so some paddle tracks. Yeah, that's fresh. Hmm. This year, at least. Okay, I believe I've been on this creek before with the. Uh, I think this is the way we came on that trip. Ken and uh, Kyle and Doug. What the heck is this? Okay, you shall not pass. Look at that rock, man. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Wow. Wow. Really cool. That's what I remember right there. Beautiful, it is beautiful. I, I was starting to wonder if it was just because it was the first time I had seen something like this, but no, this is beautiful. Wow. The sun coming in and everything, holy smokes guys. Birds singing and everything, what a good day. Put it over there. 
unlike the nip, I don't believe there's trout in these waters. I could be wrong. I don't think these are brook trout waters. And it's very shallow in here, so it's not even a use fishing. I'm just gonna keep moving. In reality, I probably shouldn't have brought my fishing rod and tackle. It's just more weight. And I've cast only maybe two or three times, but I can't turn up the chance for a little pike or something, you know? Anyway, here we go. It's tight in here, folks. This is a canoe, for, canoe route. I don't have a big canoe. I don't know if I did. Oh boy. Okay. over so carry here we carry <laughs> chill boy chill boy Took a tumble back there. The canoe got dropped and my, my fishing line got snapped off, but that's okay. Whew. Everything is good. We are here. Beautiful lake. This was potentially going to be my camp for night two. And I'm here at nine o'clock in the morning. It's taken me two hours to get here since I left. I gotta check the map and everything. This is a nice lake, very nice lake. I'm noting all of this so that I can um, keep track of it where I want to come back to and show people and stuff. I gotta get water. This is finally a uh, good spot to get water. It was all, it was all beavery back there and pretty shallow. We're in York, York Lake. So I've got to go straight across to a 785 into three arrows. There is a nice campsite. Or there's a campsite on this lake somewhere. I'm sure it's nice. It looks like it's there, but it doesn't make sense on the map. On we go. There's one campsite on York Lake, and it's very nice. Probably worth the effort to get to for this lake. It looks flat, secluded, and remote. Real good view of it all on this range here. Oh, long. Quite pretty. One thing about Killarney that's not great is the cottage is scattered throughout it. But all the ones back here, I have not seen anybody at. I just stopped here, pulled over on the side. I shot some grass to eat lunch quick. It's 1040. I've been going for four and a half hours, four hours, 40 minutes. Hungry. I had to stop on the way here to get tortillas for, for my bread. 
and they only had corn and they taste like play-doh not a fan all right so we're obviously in Killarney. I came in off number six at the Woodgoa Lodge. Woodgoa Lodge, I've used this number seven access point on here. I've used them quite a bit, they're good there. Paddled in through Charlton Lake, up, Cross Lake, Lang Lake, Cross Lang Lake, uh, down into Plunge, down into Leech, into Hanwood. Van Winkle, Van, Grow, Rocky. And Rocky is where I might have camped the first night, I supposed to have camped the first night. Then after Rocky, I kept coming down into fish, and I camped right here on Great Mountain Lake. So I went from here, more than halfway across the park, easily, uh, in one day. And then from there today, I've gone down Great Mountain, Little Mountain, down the creek, Kirk Creek and big portages, a bunch of portages, and through York, which was really nice, and through Three Narrows and down. And now I'm right in here in Three Narrows. I wanna come down. Oh, the Laclache Trail is following this too. Anyways, I'm gonna come down and do all these little portages boom 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 50 60 75 into the kirk creek and then out into mcgregor bay which is big water and up 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 and then out murray so i imagine i'll camp probably around murray tonight some big portages at the end there it's a big trip and i don't recommend someone trying to do it like this this is not like an enjoy it's, i am enjoying it but it's not like a take your time fish look at the scenery enjoyable trip this is, or even go with someone this is just like gut check head down freaking nuts to butts balls to the wall go go get food in your teeth look at the exact distance after but it's like around 90k or something like that maybe maybe a bit more huh I am absolutely roasting, like super, super hot, like August, July hot type of thing. So this is gonna be, oh boy, oh yeah. Pretty sure those are toads. Holy smokes. Yet another waterfall coming down. This is a cool little spot. I've spent some time at fishing here uh, from shore with no luck, but I think I've wasted, not wasted, but spent enough time here. I should probably move on my way. Give it one more cast on the boat and see what happens. Oh no. Oh no. I got it snagged right away. This looks wild. Can you tell them we're getting out to the big open water? There's almost nothing out here except for rock, sparse trees. And all that progress I made yesterday with my tailwind has turned into a headwind because I'm heading back west now. So it all evens itself out, you know? Well, I'm officially out of the park now. This is gorgeous. I think I've ever canoed anywhere like this, really. I can see on my GPS here that there's like, I can cut off a big chunk of going around. Like if I can connect with these two little ponds, I'm sure people have done it before. It's just how it is. So it's, it's just a matter of if I can find. This one's no problem, it's just a pullover, but the one on the other end, getting back into the main lake, out of the pond is uh, quite a bit bigger. But like I said, I'm sure people have done it. So I'm sure that there's somewhat of a trail. Wow, 
I sure am glad I did this. It's a freaking maze. It's like a beaver pond for sure, but it's beautiful. This is away from the big water, tucked right in here, shallow water. The hokey smokes. Look at this. I love the rock everywhere. Sparse trees. I'm gonna have no problem getting back over into the big water. There's not even forest. I messed up. This is as far as I can paddle. I gotta get up over there. I'm gonna try and see if I can walk on this stuff. Well, it's uh, not quite land, not quite water. Oh, that's a little bit better. Ugh. second it feels like nobody comes in here now that i now that i'm actually in here <laughs> yeah i would not recommend this route stay on the main track don't come through this pond okay back on the water i'll get with you once i'm in the small lakes again i think Oh man. This is my view coming back onto the main route here. Man, I'm in love. I'm coming back. This is. Oh, fish are all swimming in the water. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm in love. I've been traveling for nine hours. Does my face look like it? Well, I wish I would have got that on film. I fell in. I trusted this piece of, I'll show you. I had to dump the water out first. <laughs> I'm drenched in every part of me. Oh man, I'm drenched. phone still works so that's good like I went in the whole way maybe not my face shit my backpack was open got wet I didn't have everything in my um, dry bag because I was eating food and stuff it was all open so I'll we'll have to deal with that uh, yeah I stepped on this, trusting it. Thought I thought I could actually step on it for a second, but it like turned over like an iceberg on the one side. And the clouds have come out quite a bit, and so have the bugs. I gotta start moving and warming up. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Ah, that was the dumbest thing, man. I've been freaking Ninja Joe all day long, running on top of logs and bogs and all sorts of fun stuff. And that stupid thing, I just, I, looked, I thought I could have, I almost was in. And, and then I actually almost tipped my canoe over too, trying to get into it and I had to let it go, got all that water in it. But uh, yeah, where am I going? I didn't even notice this, I'm covered in cattail fluff. I must have. Bumped into one on the way on the way down. <laughs> Take one out with me. Okay, so it was always a possibility. <laughs> as soon as I started making time, I'm looking at this map and thinking, I can make it out today, I think. And if I can, that's insanity. And I'll be happy with that. Whatever. Who cares? Um, I'm soaking wet. I'll be proud of myself if I can do it. I don't need to camp again. If I have to, I can. But I'll be paddling out in the dark and show. Anyways, it says from Murray out, it's two hours and 55 minutes on this map. I know I can do it faster than that, and it's five o'clock now. So I have light till nine. If I can make it to Murray, which is a 
two four two five meter portage a little bit of a paddle and then a 1420 meter portage i think i can make that in just over an hour and i can make from murray out back to my car in just under three hours so it kind of evens itself out to be right around nine o'clock and if that's the case i will have gone for 12. i started at seven so 14 hours 14 hours a day uh today and then i started at 11 a.m yesterday so this is a crazy road to do that trip in, in that amount of time and if i can I'm pretty soaked either way i think that's what i'm going to shoot for now it says on my map the water in nelly lake contains a large amount of calcium carbonate the same primary ingredient in tums or rollings so if you got a little tummy ache you know i'll just pull on over nelly don't do that don't actually do it this is this is wild it's so clear i just read on here it says um nelly lake is the clearest lake on a canoe route in fact you can see down as far as 28 meters only whiskey jack lake is in the southeast corner of the park is clear and i've been looking and seeing there's a campsite right here this is freaking beauty i gotta bring will here for sure I'm almost done this big portage. I believe it's the last big one. I saw this and I had to show you guys. Look at this. Like that is the clearest water. That's a little overgrown. Woo Almost lost her there. Almost lost her there. Okay. Woo. I have officially been going for just over 12 hours, which puts us at seven o'clock for anyone paying attention, 7.10 to be exact. And I am making my way to the car. Uh, if I make it there, it will be in the dark. If I need to stop, I will, and I'll just catch up along the side. I'll be out of the park at that point anyway, so it doesn't matter either way. But if I know me, which sometimes I do, I believe that I will make it out. Well, this is interesting. I assume this is just a portage flooded out right now, but I guess I can't paddle it. I'm back. opening up pretty soon I'm gonna be on the lake that I started at yesterday at 11 in the morning not pretty soon in a while <laughs> Howry Lake, the big wide spot of the creek, is just stacked with fish. They're all coming to the surface like crazy, getting bugs or whatever. They seem pretty big. I can't uh, catch one for the life of me. They just don't want anything to do with my lures, but that's okay. Uh, it's good to know for next time. Sun is behind the trees and that nice cool breeze is now pretty chilly. I'm, gonna have, I'm almost done, but I think I might have to put my puppy on here. My feet are just freezing, soaking wet. This is one of the most colorful nights this year for me out, <coughs> out paddling. Oh boy, I'm so very close. Look at this. Look at this sign. Widgawa Lodge this way. Widgawa this way. 
I'm like 10 minutes out tops and it is 9.15. Peep, peep, peep. It's deafening. That's it. One last carry to the car. Nine thirty two.